Every 45 seconds, a trans person makes an attempt on their life, meaning that one happened every two speakers that you saw this very moment. 10 years ago, that was me, and one year ago, that was one of my siblings. And tomorrow, it will be the children of people in this room. Your vote on this bill determines if that 45 seconds becomes 30. And that our blood is on your hands. Wrong. The blood is on your hands. No one can control your actions but you. The trans ideologues try at once to assert their rights to self-determination while simultaneously shifting the consequences of and responsibility for their actions onto the shoulders of others. Amplifying tactical deceit and cries of bigotry to justify both extremes. The bearded individual in the first clip made the audacious claim that a trans person attempts to end their life every 45 seconds. That comes out to be 3,840 attempts a day, 1,402,560 a year. Very odd, considering that according to the CDC in 2020, 1.2 million cases of attempts to end one's life were recorded. So they are claiming that out of the 1.2 million attempts, 1.4 were committed by trans people? This kind of deception is not only endemic within transgenderism, but is the foundation of gender ideology. There was a time when, not that long ago, a person presented the risk of ending their own life, or even the threat of self-harm when that individual was removed from society until a medical professional was convinced that the patient was no longer a danger. I am not necessarily advocating for that. Just drawing the distinction that now the entire Western world is bending over backwards to accommodate the whims of a tiny minority who wields power by holding themselves hostage. Words are not dangerous, ever, period. Every generation but the youngest today knew, if only unconsciously, that no one is responsible for your emotions and how you respond to them, but you. The only arbiter of one's feelings is the individual himself. If something I say, no matter how cruel you perceive it to be, triggers you, If opposing views or even insults make you feel unsafe, if a harsh statement enraged you or hurt your feelings, that is ultimately your fault. Words only have the power you give them. No one else is inside of you, acting as the architect, pulling your emotional puppet strings, determining how you feel. I simply don't have that power. Only you do. Having said that, there are many people whose words can hurt me. That is the nature of loving someone, making yourself vulnerable to them. When you care about a person, part of the unacknowledged agreement is handing them that power. It's much the same with inciting violence. It doesn't matter how persuasive a speaker might be. The only one responsible for your actions is you. It doesn't matter what words are used, what manipulations an orator applies. After all, no speaker is able to employ some sort of mind control technique such that they control an audience remotely. Similarly, a person's response to legislation passed by the state or federal governments is only within the control of one's self. If your reaction is that of hostility and violence, then that is a choice, a prerogative willingly and intentionally exercised. Now we have arrived at our point. The trans community relies on threats to themselves to justify the direction in which they are pushing the world. Betting that our empathy will act as an impediment, preventing us from pushing back. They have convinced us that if we do, their deaths are on our hands. Mm -hmm. The logical fallacy 
trans activists are promoting is as follows. If trans identifying children are not allowed to transition to and exercise all the benefits of their chosen gender, then they are at risk of self-injury and ending their own lives. Therefore, in order to prevent these results, we must socially and surgically transition children and allow them access at all levels of society to the spaces of the opposite sex. We must recast entire languages in a gender-neutral form, even for cultures outside of our own. We must strip women of their rights, stifle freedom of speech, and teach gender and queer theories to children in the classroom. The problem is that the initial statement is untrue. History is unable to provide even a single example of mysterious rashes of children taking their own lives in mass. Hence, if the starting point is a fallacy, then the string of logical statements built upon it are likewise fallacies. Yet we allow ourselves to be manipulated by cynical immoralists who weaponize our sympathy and empathy against us. This is akin to a, a drug-addled relative holding a gun to his own head, demanding that you commit ro armed robbery to fund his addiction. The fundamental flaw in trans logic is to assume that we can ever be responsible for their actions. The trick being played is to get us to believe it. And in buying into this threat, Trans activism uses our lack of outright psychopathy to extort and blackmail us into compliance. In the case of the addicted relative, if you complied with his demands, no court in the world would excuse you from criminal liability. You would be guilty of armed robbery, and no sympathy would be granted simply because you are trying to prevent your relative's death by his own hands. On the other hand, had you refused, you would in no way be guilty if, of murder if your relative made good on his threat. And that's just the point. If someone threatens themselves and carries it out, that person and him only is responsible for ending his life. However, when we give in to the extortion attempts by radical activists, allowing ourselves to be bludgeoned by cries of bigotry and self-harm. Only then do we re assume responsibility for whatever terribleness may follow. The end of women's rights, religious rights, and free speech. An entire generation of children indoctrinated into the gender cult of ideology and surgically transitioned. Sterile, unable to experience sexual gratification, an ever-decreasing birth rate, and the creation of a mechanized administrative Marxist regime. All this and more becomes our shared burden. The blame is ours if we do nothing. This is the choice that the woke devourers have thrust upon us. Assume the false responsibility for other people's actions by submission to those holding themselves hostage. Or recognize the actual guilt we will bear if we do not oppose the woke agenda. If we do not force them to realize that if they are offended, if they choose to self-harm, the fault is their own. They don't get to shift the mantle of blame upon our shoulders and threaten us with their choice to self-destruct. It's not that I don't sympathize with their pain. It's that I will not allow my better nature to be used against me by actors who are not so inclined to return the kindness. Then again, what do I know? I'm just some punk who cares. <laughs>